So we're going to be talking about how to graph lines using intercepts. So the first question we have to ask is what are intercepts? Well, anytime that you have a line, let me go ahead and draw ourselves a straight line. So there's my straight line. And let's say that it crosses the axis at 0, 1, and over here at 4, 0. Well, notice that this line crosses the y-axis at this point, the x-axis at this point, 4, 0. So this would be called the y-intercept of the line, and this would be called the x-intercept of the line. So in other words, the x-intercept is where your line crosses the x-axis, and the y-intercept is where your line crosses the y-axis. Okay, so notice something. When you cross an x-axis like this point right here, we always have to have one of the x or the y-coordinate be zero, and notice that the y-coordinate is zero. This is always true always, always true. Whenever you cross the x-axis, your y-coordinate has to be zero. In other, in other words, you always have something comma zero for your x-axis. For your uh, y-intercept, you always have zero comma something. Notice up here it was zero, one for the y-intercept. So, to find the x-intercept, um, substitute y equals 0 and solve for x, and to find the y-intercept, Substitute x equals 0 and solve for y. Okay, so these are the two steps for finding the intercepts. So since two points make a line, you only need to find the x and y intercept, and at that point, you can graph a line. Usually, to be safe, we find a third point. So, to be safe, always find three points on a line before graphing. This is just a way to check your work, okay, because you, you're never going to have three points that line up perfectly if you made a mistake. So, if you do three points and it looks like this, then you know that one of the three is at least wrong, right? So, uh, you can go back and check your work. But if all three of them lie in a row like this, then you know that your answer has to be right. All right, so let's practice some problems. We're gonna practice graphing the lines so this is the instructions. It's going to say graph the line by finding intercepts I guess I should say by first finding intercepts. Okay. So, number one. The line is going to be negative x plus 2y equals 4. Usually the way that we find intercepts, a nice way to lay out your work is to 
create your table, and we're going to do 0 for x and 0 for y, and see what happens. So let me go ahead and plug in 0 for x first. We get negative 0 plus 2y equals 4. But negative 0 is just 0, and so it just becomes 2y equals 4. Divide by 2, we get y equals 2. So I'm going to put a 2 right there. Now let's put 0 for y. We get negative x plus 2 times 0 equals 4, but 2 times 0 is 0. It just becomes negative x equals 4. Divide by negative 1, we get x equals negative 4. So we put a negative 4 right there. So let's go ahead and plot our two points. Actually, before I do that, let me find one more. It's usually a good idea to find at least one more just to check your work like we talked about. Why don't I go ahead and plug in y equals negative 2 in my table. I chose that number kind of randomly. It doesn't matter which one you pick. So we plug it in. We get negative x minus 4 equals 4. Add 4 to both sides. Negative x equals 8. Divide both sides by negative 1, we get x equals negative 8. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw our picture. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So first we have 0, 2. Actually, let me put this here, negative 8. So first we have 0, 2, which is right here. That's 0, 2. Then we have negative 4, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, 0. And then we have negative 8, negative 2. So negative 8, negative 2 would be right here. Notice that this does look like a line, like we hoped. So that means that we know that we did it right. So let's go ahead and label this point right here, 0, 2. This is the y-intercept, because that's where the graph crosses the y-axis. This point would be negative 4, 0. This is the x-intercept. And then this point is negative 8, negative 2. This point isn't either intercept, but that's our checkpoint. It's never a bad thing to find more points than what the uh, problem asks you to find. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, 3x plus 2y equals 6. Same instructions. Well, let me go ahead and create my table. So we have, we're going to do 0 for x and 0 for y. Let's see what we get. First, when we plug in 0 for x, divide by 2, we get y equals 3. So this is 3. Now, if I plug in 0 for y, I get 3x plus 2 times 0 equals 6, or 3x equals 6. Divide by 3, I get x equals 2. Okay. What now? Well, let me go ahead and do x equals 4. Why not? I'm going to make this a 4. Sometimes it helps to keep continuing the same pattern here. If I put in x equals 4, I get 3 times 4 plus 2y equals 6. 12 plus 2y equals 6. Subtract 12 from both sides, I get 2y equals negative 6. Divide both sides by 2, I get y equals negative 3. Remember, this would be the y-intercept. And this would be the x-intercept. It's okay if we don't want to label that yet. You can always wait till after you graph it in case you're confused about which is which. Go ahead and draw my line here. We have 0, 
3, 2, 0, negative 4, oops, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 3. Be right here. Go ahead and label. This is 0, 3. This is 2, 0. This one is 4, negative 3. Always label your points. Teachers love that because it shows that you really knew where they were. You weren't just plotting points there randomly. Okay? Let's do another example. The next few that we do will be kind of interesting. They'll be a little bit different. Let's do this one. Well, number three. 4x plus 5y equals 0. Let's see what happens when we try this one. First of all, if I put in my xy table and 0 for x, I get 4 times 0 plus 5y equals 0, or 5y equals 0. Divide by 5, I get y equals 0. So that's a 0 right there. If I put in 0 for y, notice what happens. I get 4x plus 5 times 0 equals 0, or 4x equals 0. Divide by 4, I get x equals 0 again. So actually, 0, 0 appears to be both the x-intercept and the y-intercept. What does that mean? Well, let's find 0, 0. 0, 0 is right in the origin, isn't it? So in fact, we only got one point out of this. One point. So we need another point. This isn't just for checking. We actually can't draw a line unless we know another point, because this line can go anywhere. Right? It can look like this, or this, or this, or this. As long as it goes through the middle, we don't know what it looks like. Okay? So we need another point. We need two points. So for this, we're going to plug in another x. It doesn't matter which one we use, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try x equals 5. Just to avoid fractions, I know that if I plug in uh, 5, you, this takes a little bit of experimentation to find ones that work nicely. So if I plug in x equals 5, I get 4 times 5 plus 5y equals 0, or 20 plus 5y equals 0. Subtract 20 from both sides. I get 5y equals negative 20. Divide both sides by 5. I get y equals negative 4. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. It looks like that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug in negative 5. Because still, if I have 3 points, I could be absolutely sure that this line is correct. So putting in negative 5... I get negative 20 plus 5y equals 0. Add 20 to both sides, I get 5y equals 20. Divide by 5, I get y equals 4. So actually, I have a 4 here and a negative 4 here. So negative 5, 4. Right about here. There you go, this looks like a nice line here. I go ahead and label my points. This is negative 5, 4, this is 0, 0, and this is 5, negative 4. So actually, this point right here is the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So yes, you could have the same point be both intercepts. Notice that that is exactly where it crosses both axes. Let's try another one. This one will be a little bit different. x equals negative 2. <clears throat> well, what happens when we try to solve something like this? Well, I know that if I put 0 for y, 
x is going to be negative 2 because x is always negative 2. What if I put 0 for x? Well, then I get 0 equals negative 2, which doesn't make any sense. So in fact, that can never happen. That means negative 2, 0 is the x-intercept, and it does not have a y-intercept. How can that happen? How can a line not have a y-intercept? Well, why don't we go ahead and graph this line? Now, if we think back to what x equals negative 2 is, isn't x equals negative 2 actually a vertical line? Why is that? Well, that's because no matter what I plug in for y, I get negative 2 for x. In other words, if I were to plot those two points, negative 2, 0 would be here, negative 2, 1 would be here, negative 2, 2 would be here. So you can see that this is a vertical line. Let me go ahead and label these three points that I have here. So notice this line will never cross the y-axis. There is no y-intercept. Yes, this only happens with vertical lines. This point right here would be the x-intercept. Let's try one more like that. This time we'll do y equals 4. Well, we know when we do an x-y table that when you have 0 for x, y is just 4. And you can never have 0 for y. That actually has no solution. But if we do 1 for x, we get 4. 2 for x, we get 4. We always get 4 for y. So, 0, 4 would be right here. 1, 4 would be right here, 2, 4 would be right here. This is, in fact, a horizontal line. Horizontal. Notice that a horizontal line does not cross the x-axis. That means it does not have an x-intercept. Let me go ahead and label these points. This is 0, 4. This is 1, 4. And this is 2, 4. So 0, 4 would be the y-intercept. And it has no x-intercept. So the important thing to remember when doing these problems is that you're not always going to have two intercepts, right? We had two intercepts at the beginning. Then in the last question, we only had one x and y-intercept. It was the same point. In this problem, we had no x-intercept. The last one, we had no y-intercept. It just depends on the example that you're doing. You always find the intercepts the same way, and then always find a total of three points that will really help you draw the correct picture. Okay, thanks very much for watching, and uh, watch the other video on how to graph using the slope-intercept form of a line. Thank you.